Hello everybody and welcome to part 1 of the Python for Finance tutorial series. The goal of this series is to show you how Python can be used in this field. We're going to start with some very basic topics such as how do we get stock data and how do we get cryptocurrency data. Also we're going to do some backtesting using the most popular technical indicators such as moving average, relative strength index as well as Bollinger Bands. We're also going to see how we can find correlation between various stocks and cryptocurrencies and at the end we're going to build a portfolio and do some portfolio optimization. Now let's get started with the first topic which is how do we collect data from the internet. Um, well there are many ways to do that. I'm going to include a link in the description of the video. But the one that I'm going to use in my opinion is the most simple one and I strongly advise it for beginners. And that way is first we're going to import pandas underscore data reader dot data as web. So this is something that we're going to use to collect data. Now when we collect data we have to provide a start and an end date of our data series. In order to do that we're going to import date time as DT. So this is something that will help us to specify start and end dates. Next we're going to specify these dates. So st our starting date would be equal to dt.datetime and in the brackets we're going to specify first the year. So let's say that we want to get the data points from the beginning of this year which would be 2020 then the month January then the date first. Our end date would be the same so dt.datetime and in the brackets um, today is September 8th which means that I can't use today's date because the date is not done over yet. So at the, at the moment as I'm filming this video the stock market is still open so I'm going to use the day before so September and then 7 so the day before. Then we need um, let's say let's start with stock so let's have a ticker of stock ticker which would be Google. We're, start, we're going to start with this but then later we can also see how we can take uh, some cryptocurrency symbol and use that instead and then we need to get the data. Now the data would be equal to web which is what we import at the very beginning dot data reader and then in the brackets we need to specify first the ticker then the source. Now we're going to use Yahoo Finance so we're going to specify Yahoo then the start and end date of our data series and let's print data dot head so the first, let's say first three rows and also data.tail, again the, the last three rows of our data. Um, let's see what is the outcome. So as you can see, this script connects to, to Yahoo Finance and this is the outcome. So as you can see at the beginning of the year, this is the first working day, so 2nd of January. We have six columns, so we have high, low, uh, what we don't see here is open and close. So those are these three dots and then we have the volume and adjusted close. Actually if we do print data dot columns we should see only the columns. So high low, high, low, open, close, volume, adjusted close. So those are the six columns that come when we use this approach um, as output. And we have also the last working days. Now as you can see here I specified September 7th as last working day. But here we get it up until 4th. Now the reason for that is 4th of September is a Friday, then 5th and 6th are non-working days and 7th is actually Labor Day. So um, this is actually the last trading day. Now when you are working with stocks, you don't want to, especially when you're in the process of creating a script, a script you don't want to go back to Yahoo Finance to get the data set again and again and again. So ideally you would do this once, then save the data to a file. Um, so that's what we're going to do. But before that, let's try to have here, instead of a ticker, let's, have, let's actually create a cryptocurrency. And that would be equal to, um, basically when we have a, a cryptocurrency, what we do is we express the cryptocurrency into uh, a currency. So when we say how much a Bitcoin is worth, we usually think of how much Bitcoin is worth to into US dollars or, or euros. So this is basically what we need to do here as well. 
So Bitcoin dash euros or let's say US dollars um, would provide us now here instead of ticker we need to use cryptocurrency would provide us the data for these dates so let's see how that works now let's see the output of that so as you can see now we get different dates the only date here is and um, we even get 8th of September that's interesting since we specified up until 7th so this data point is still active it's not really closed but nonetheless this is how you would go into obtaining the data and as you can see we also have data for the 1st of January even though it's a non-trading day well Bitcoin is not traded on the stock exchange therefore it's we're going to have a data for point for every single date except for this one which should not be here this is something that we need to get rid of so as I mentioned before if you're working uh, with data points like this what you want to do is you want to save these um, data sets in a particular place that you can access and you don't have to go back to Yahoo again and again in order to do that well if you want to save it that would be quite easy you would just use data dot to underscore CSV and then in the brackets you're going to specify the file name now if we go back and use the ticker of Google and if we just use google.csv it can work but if you're running this task for a list of tickers so let's say you have Google Apple Amazon and, and a lot more then this part you would want to be related to the ticker and you can do that the way you to do that is by using dot format and then ticker so this part would be replaced with whatever the ticker is so let's create a tickers list which would be equal to Google let's say Amazon and Apple now what we want to do is for every ticker in tickers we want this to run so data to be equal to what we specified in the brackets then we want that data to be stored we don't have to print it so I'm going to get rid of this part but we would like it to be saved to a CSV file and the CSV well it would be the ticker so it would be google.csv gook amz and apple so let's run and see if they appear correctly in our folder on the right side of the screen and this is just one way to get the data so it works as you can see we, we got the data um, this is the easiest way uh, in the link you will see other ways and other sources so uh, at the moment I'm just using Yahoo Finance you can use Quandle you can use a lot of other data sources um, for the purpose of this tutorial I'm going to stick with this but note that if you're watching this tutorial years later it could be that this approach is no longer valid and that you need to find another way to access this data so that would be all for this tutorial and i'll see you in the next one